Hello, and welcome to our Surge Experience Online. It is a joy to have you join us today and an honor to share our ministry with you. We pray you will be blessed by the worship, the message, and the ministry. If you are new to Surge, we want to welcome you. Please log on to our website at surgechurch.tv and complete the online connect card that you will find on the main graphic of the homepage. It will be a privilege to connect with you and to be a part of your spiritual growth. As we gather together today, let's join in worship, receive God's word in faith, and stay connected in spirit. Get ready because the Surge Experience starts now. Right now, we're so excited to welcome Pastor Mary Sullivan as she comes and ministers the Word of God today. Give it up and show your love for Pastor Mary Sullivan. I knew I shouldn't let him have the microphone. He's going to get up and start preaching. He just can't help it. <laughs> Cannot help himself, can he? He said, I want you to make this announcement. I'm like, mm -mm, I can't do that. You're going to have to... <laughs> And that's what I get for not making the announcement. No, well, praise God. God is so good. So today, you know, I'm older, but I may be younger than some of you. But my message today is I'm going to mama you a little bit because I, I am the mama of this house now. And, uh, but you know, mamas... Well, I do to mine. My mom did this to me is, you know, we, we coddle a little bit. And we kind of like when you need some, not correction, but you need some direction. And you need some encouragement and some reminders on some things. What do mamas do? They bring in, they sit you down, they say, now listen. And they talk to you. So today, I'm going to just talk to you a little bit. Okay? Now, you know dads sometimes. They, they let you have it. <laughs> Not that you don't see crazy mama. My boys see crazy mama too. But today we're going to talk about what are you saying? Say that with me. Say, what you saying? What are you saying? Thank you. Your words are so important. Amen. They're powerful. But God's word is powerful. We were singing about that this morning. Isaiah 55.10 says, For as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven, and, and do not return there, but water to the earth, and make it bring, bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing to which I sent it. So just like the rain and the snow falls and it is fruitful and it springs forth, so does God's word when it is spoken over his people. Amen? It's powerful. The word of God is powerful. And when God speaks, he speaks life. God doesn't speak death to you. He always speaks life. It also tells us that his word doesn't return void. What does that mean? It means it always accomplishes what it sets out to do. It never returns void. It never falters and it never fails. It does what it is sent to do. The moment God speaks it, it never fails. It's not, uh, failure's not an option with God. Aren't you glad you serve a God that... He cannot fail. He's never going to fail you. Everything God speaks to responds to his word. It responds to it. Every time God speaks something, whatever he's speaking to responds to it, and it prospers. But did you know that you are called and you've been given the authority to speak as well? And when you speak, your words have power, just like God's words have power. He's living on the inside of you. So the power that when he speaks, you have that same authority. And now the authority of the believer, which is a great book by Brother Hagen, I encourage you to read it. That's a whole nother message. But you have the authority. But we're talking about what are you saying? Your words just like God's, are full of power. Do you know that words can heal? Words can wound. They can minister death. They can minister life. They can encourage. They can discourage. They can build up, and they can tear down. You know, people get divorced over words. 
But you know, people also restore marriages over words. Families are split over words, but families can be healed and restored with words. Your words are like containers. When they're spoken, they have power to them. You know, it's time that we step up and be accountable for what we're saying. You know, this year, Pastor uh, Brad has really laid it out to us. We felt like last year, you know, we're not even supposed to mention last year, right? (laughs) But this year, we're accelerating, and we're moving forward, and God has so much for us. But you know what? It takes a step of faith, and to believe God for big things, you got to have a lot of faith. You got to have big faith. But in In order for your faith to work, this is where I'm going to mama you. What you say matters. What you're saying and what you're speaking out into existence matters. And it's what we allow to come out of our mouths. We live in a day and age where nothing is anybody's fault. It's always somebody else's fault. It is your responsibility for the words that are coming out of your mouth. Man. It's what you allow. What are you speaking into your family? What are you speaking into your home? What are you speaking into your church? What are you speaking into your job? It's what we allow. Matthew 12, verse 36. But I say to you that every idle word men speak, they will give account of it in the day of judgment. For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. Okay, right there, God's telling you, it's, you're going to be held accountable for the words that are coming out of your mouth and what you're saying. Idle words are empty rhetoric, insincere, or exaggerated talk. We're accountable for what we say. Now, I have been accused of being sarcastic a little bit, but not in a mean way. Miss Teresa Young and I have that in common, but it's not in a mean way. We had to apologize one day after pastor preached about people being sarcastic. I said, if he calls me out, we're going to have trouble when we get home. He did not, though. He did not call me out. But it's more sarcastic in a fun way. (laughs) And I'm passing that on to my children. He lets me know. But it's not idle talk. Don't let idle words come out of your mouth because you are accountable for them. And don't be a person that just speaks to take up space. You know, sometimes you've been around those people, you're like, oh my gosh, stop talking. (laughs) But don't just, don't just blah, 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 you know, run your mouth all the time. Why? Because when you get to just, have you ever been nervous and you just let things just flow out of your mouth and you're thinking, why did I say that? (laughs) That's because you're not thinking about what you're saying. But you have to be careful about what's coming out of your mouth. You know, just like kids, they say things that you're looking at them like, don't say that, okay? You know, they talk when they're not supposed to, but you're training them, you're teaching them, and that's what we are. You know, we're God's children. He's training us, and we're, he's teaching us, but at some point, we're held accountable, so we got to grow up from those things, amen? Kenneth Hagin once said, people who talk a lot sin a lot. That's a good one. People that talk a lot, sin a lot. Why? Because they're not thinking about what they're saying. They're just running their mouth to be talking. And it's okay. I know some people say I talk a lot. My son Slade. Now, it's not idle words. He just likes to talk. (laughs) And I'm going to embarrass him just because I can. But he's always, you know, from the time he was in kindergarten, and all of you have heard these stories before, you know, he would just talk and talk. We, we met, we had close relationships with every teacher he ever had up until he was like in seventh grade because then he finally quit talking so much. Because we'd get called in, they're like, he's such a wonderful young man. He's so sweet and he's kind, and, but he has a lot to say. So we're like, Slade, you have to be quiet. And his his one teacher moved him all around the room. She said, I moved him because I thought, you know, little kids, they're not going to talk to the girls. He didn't care who it was. He's talked to anybody. She said, I moved him by me. He talked to me. (laughs) But that's okay. He likes to talk. (laughs) But sometimes when the pressure's on is when we open our mouths and we just throw something out there. When the pressures of life come on, you know, it's not 
Walking in faith and watching what you say is easy when everything is going fine. It's easy to believe God when things are going great. But it's when the pressure's on is where you really find where you are and you can locate yourself. You know, sometimes just in anger, you'll just sling it out there and say something. We say things like, it's killing me, or I hate that. Oh, you know, this is, I am so sick of this. Hey, and we're all, again, I'm momming you, okay? We're all, we all do these things. But it's just things to work on, things to, once you know about it and somebody brings it to your attention, you can start working on it. You know, words are like boomerangs. They come back to you. And our words matter. They bring life or death. In Proverbs 18, 21, death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those that, who love it will eat of its fruits. What are you speaking into existence? You're speaking life or you're speaking death? You set the tone of your life by your words. You are where you are today in part because of what you've been saying. Again, remember, we're held accountable. God said we're accountable for the words that we're speaking. The words are like seeds. When you speak something out, you're giving life to it. Life and death. So when you speak, some, when you speak you're either speaking life into something or you're speaking death into something. If we continue to say it, eventually things become your reality. The more you say it, it becomes your reality. You're setting your atmosphere. Whether you realize it or not, you're prophesying your future. In Proverbs 13, 2 and 3, it says, A man shall eat well by the fruit of his mouth, but the soul of the unfruitful seeds feeds on violence. He who guards his mouth preserves his life. If you guard your mouth, you preserve your life. But he who opens wide his lips shall have destructions. You know, what are we planning when we're speaking? You are planting something always. You're speaking something into existence. You're planting seeds in your home. You know, guard your homes carefully with what you allow in it, what you're saying, what you're, what you're you know, birthing out into the spirit in your home. Peace, anger, frustration, what do you, you you know, healing, health, life, Jesus. You're always planting something. You know, farmers, what do farmers, when they plant, they don't just throw whatever and hope for the best. No, they're intentional about what they plant. If they want tomatoes, they're going to plant tomato seeds. If they want, you know, they're intentional about it. Be intentional about your words and what you're planning and what you're speaking into existence in your home. You're going to reap the fruits from the exact seeds you've been sowing. So the word tells us in Luke 6.45 that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So what's in you is coming out of you. If you want to know what's on the inside of a person, you simply watch their actions and listen to what is coming out of their mouth on a regular basis. You know, now I'm not condemning anybody. We don't have any word police, just like we don't have any, you know, we fast. We don't have fasting police. We don't have word police. Like, oh, don't say that. It's not what we do. We're here to encourage and build up each other. Amen. We're all in this together, and we're all growing together. But I like to tease my husband about, which he has said before, you know, I am the word police to him because I can be. That's my job. And, you know, I get on to him, which in my mother in law is like, yes, she always encourages me to tell him. You know, because sometimes just, you know, a couple, you're just talking about things and he'll say something. I'm like, oh, no, we're not saying that. That's not what we're believing God for. It doesn't matter what this looks like or what that looks like. It doesn't matter. This is what the word says. This is what we're doing. This is where we're going. Amen. So I encourage you, you, you know, couples, that's what you ought to be for each other. Now, he waits just to pounce on me to say something <laughs> so he can, he does. But we have that kind of relationship. That's how it works. <laughs> but find yourself, put yourself around. You know, you have those close people that are close to you. Find somebody that will help build you up and help keep you in line and keep your mouth 
in line with the Word of God, because life is tough, okay? It's not that this is just so easy. This is an effort. It's an effort. And, you know, sometimes you got to keep coming back to the Word to see what the Word says about it. You know, I, I've been working out with a, a trainer now. I know you can all tell. And uh, so... But I've been for months, and, you know, I, I keep, uh, I tell Brad, I'm like, I'm going to have to keep her forever because, one, I'm not going to go without her. <laughs> but, you know, I forget. It, you know, you think after all this time I've been doing these exercises, I've been doing these certain things, and she'll say, okay, we'll do this. And I'm like, uh, what? <laughs> what does that mean? What? Do what again? Because I forget, but she's there to, to help me and to remind me. Well, you know, that's the same way the Word is. It helps you to remind you, to encourage you, to keep moving you forward. Amen. Amen, in Jesus' name. Today, I just want to give you a short word of encouragement about how your kindness and your generosity with your seed opens doors. We're going to start in 1 Samuel, and let me just paint the scene for you. David and his mighty men have arrived back at Ziklag and it's burned and they want to stone him. But he puts on the linen of Fod and he goes to God and God says, pursue them and without fail, you will recover all. And there's this one portion. David pursued, he and 400 men and they found an Egyptian in the field and brought him to David and gave him bread and he ate and they let him drink water. And they gave him a piece of cake of figs and two clusters of raisins. So when he had eaten, his strength came back to him. David is pursuing his family. He's pursuing with these guys. And you know that his focus is right there. But he is sensitive to how God is going to open a door for him. They find this, if, if there was a guy I found out in the field, just leave him. We got more important things. God's told us to go and recover all. But no, they brought him to him, and he was generous, and he was kind. They didn't just give him bread and water, cakes of figs, raisins, sweet things. That's how God's going to open the door for you. When you're generous, and when you give a gift that is sweet to him, he's going to open the door. Because you know what happened next? David said to him, to whom do you belong and where are you from? And he said, I'm a young man from Egypt, servant of an Amalekite. We made an invasion in the southern area of Caleb and we burned Ziklag with fire. And David said to him, can you take me down to this troop? And when he had brought him down there, they were spread out of the land, eating and drinking and dancing because of all the great spoil that they'd taken from the land of Judah. And David attacked them from twilight until evening the next day. Your generous seed allows God to open a door so that your pursuit is timely, that your pursuit is easier than what you would expect it to be. And David recovered all the Amalekites had carried away. How many of us are in a recover all season? It is time that we recover all. And the recovering all starts with our generous gift today. So let's let God use our generosity and our kindness to open doors to fulfill his word and to fulfill his promises to us. There are several ways to give. They are on the screen behind me. If you're with us at home, you can give through the app. You can give online, surgechurch.tv backslash give. We're gonna pass the buckets for the tithes and the offerings. The altars are open at any time. Feel free to come sow a seed for your recover all season. At this time, we're going to pray and we thank you, Lord, today that you are entering heaven and us in a recover all season. We thank you, Lord, you have instructed us to pursue. We thank you, Lord, you're giving us a generous heart, a generous heart, and you're giving us eyes to see what your, what your will is for us to do. We thank you, Lord. It's in our hands, it's yours, and it will be done. In Jesus' name, amen. And what are we meditating on? That's so important. What are you meditating on? What you think about and meditate on, eventually it's going to come out of your mouth.
what you focus on, where you put your attention, that's what's going to come out. You know, I encourage you over and over and over. Every time I speak, I said, you got to put something in to have something come out. You got to put the word in. You know, and, and people don't like doing that. They don't want to put in the work that it takes to be able to get to certain places. But there's no easy, easy street here. You got to put the word in to get the word to come out. And that's studying and meditating. The word tells you to study and meditate to show yourself approved. Amen. Now, there are two kinds of voices that are vying for your attention. You have faith and defeat. And we choose which voice we're going to listen to and what one we're going to give life to. You know, sometimes the enemy doesn't have to defeat us. We defeat ourselves. We love to blame the devil. It's just the devil. You know, sometimes it's us. <laughs> it's us. We are accountable for what we're saying and what we're doing. Sometimes the devil doesn't have to do anything. He's like, she's got it. <laughs> you know, it's true. We got to pay attention to what we're saying. And Proverbs 6 tells us that we're snared by the words of our mouth. Snared means trapped. You are trapped. You can be trapped by the words of your mouth. It is so important. Your words can cause you to stumble, cause you to trip up. You're not snared by what you think. By what you think, you're snared when you speak them out and you give life to them. You know, you're going to have a lot of thoughts come to you, but what are you saying? It's the whole title of the message. What are you saying? You're going to have thoughts, but you don't have to give life to them. That's why, you know, we, and we try to teach our kids, you know, think before you just open your mouth and let things just fall out. Think about what you're saying. Are you blessing your life or are you cursing it? What seeds are you planting? You know, I want to encourage you not to be negative. <laughs> Again, we're in a society that loves to be negative. They'd rather be negative than positive about things. Don't be a negative person. You know, negative talk gets you in trouble. And sometimes your people are so busy being negative that they can't see anything good. Try to focus on what's good. Where's God brought you from? You know, what has he brought you out of? Focus on what God's doing for you and where he's taken you. And, you know, I talk about a negative group of people as the children of Israel. They're my favorite to talk about because you can learn so much from them. And I feel like we are all really <laughs> a lot like that, the children of Israel. And, you know, in the beginning, they were full of awe and just thankfulness for God. Look what he's done for us. He's brought us out. We were in slavery and bondage. And look what happened to us back there. God is so good. And they were moving forward, and he was feeding them manna from heaven. And, you know, but that didn't last long for them to get discouraged. Sometimes we, we forget where we came from and that we, we get we get unsatisfied with where we are, and we start getting negative and complaining. You know, they said, eventually, they said, hey, you know what? It'd be better for us to go back to slavery than to be out here. Really? <laughs> In Numbers 13... This is where Moses, he sends out the spies. Okay, so God brought them out. They're in the, wandering in the wilderness. Now they're going to go take the land. In Numbers 13, 1, it says, And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Send men to spy out the land of Canaan, which I am giving to the children of Israel. From each tribe of their fathers you shall send a man, and every one of the leaders among you. Let's skip down to verse 27. It says, Then they told him, and they said, We went to the land where you sent us. It truly flows with milk and honey, and this is its fruits. Nevertheless, the people who dwell there in the land are strong. The cities are fortified and very large. Moreover, we saw the descendants of Anak there. Moses received negative and positive feedback. But in verse 30, it says, And Caleb said, Hey, let us go up once and take possession, for we are well able to overcome it. I, and I, I, told, I told Brad this this morning uh, because he was asking about my message. I said, the part that gets me the most is that get yourself a Caleb. Surround yourself with some people that say, oh, it don't matter what this looks like. We are well able to go forward 
and to take this. That's who you need in your corner, not the fearful. And that doesn't mean you're not wise, but hey, it didn't matter. Caleb's like, "Mm -mm, we're well able. We're well able to take it. But the negative, it won over. It beat out the positive. That tells you something there, too, that you had, you had fewer people that were positive and more of the negative. People feed on negativity, and negativity grows. But you know what? Just so can positivity. Amen? But negative people will always find something bad to say even when things are going well. In verse 31, it says, the, the spies tell all the reasons that they cannot go and conquer the land. Now, I want to read this to you. Let me get this. It's chapter 14. And the, the title of the, of the chapter there says, Israel refuses to enter Canaan. So we're going to just read verses 1 through 4. It says, So all the congregation lifted up their voices and cried, and the people wept that night. And all the children of Israel complained against Moses and Aaron, and the whole congregation said to them, If only we had died in the land of Egypt, or if only we had died in this wilderness, why has the Lord brought us to this land to fall by the sword, that our wives and our children should become victims? Would it not be better for us to return to Egypt? So they said one to another, let us select a leader and return to Egypt. You believe that? You're thinking, I would never do that. Well, but we do that in life. God had brought them to that, and they got to a point of where it looked like a little bit of a challenge, and what they do, their words were death. We would rather go back here and be in bondage again than to trust God to take us forward. That's where faith, we got to have faith of this year like never before. You got to be able to stand strong and believe God for things. But I'll tell you what, you got to watch your words because your words will kill what you're trying to do. Man, they wanted to choose a new leader and go back to Egypt. And then in verse 11, the Lord said to Moses, how long will these people reject me and how long will they not believe me? And with all the signs which I have performed among them. You know, and later it goes on in this, this chapter for Moses had to tell God, don't kill these people. <laughs> God's like, after all I've done for them and all the miracles, what have you seen? What has God done for you that you would turn back and not pursue forward? Mm. Negative talk will only make you weaker. Negative words will keep you from becoming who God created you to be. Don't fall in that trap. Guard your mouth with everything that you have. You know, in tough times, especially be on guard. Sometimes we stare at our situations too long. We look at it, you know, and it was this big. Now I focus on it, now it's this big, now it's this, and I talked about it, and I called my aunt, and I called my friends, and I called this person, then I got on social media, and then I got, you know, I Googled to see what it really meant when this happens, and now it's ginormous, and it is all you can see. We do that. Sometimes we just get emotional release from, you know, getting it all out and airing it all out and throwing it all out there. You know, I, I, we don't want to be murmur and complainers like the children of Israel, where God's like, can't do anything with them. Again, it's our decision, our choice. We determine if we're going to go forward, and we're going to move forward in faith, and we're going to speak life. Amen? And we look at the giants too long. Look at David facing Goliath. You know, you don't read in there where, in the scripture where David went on and on. He sat and contemplated about how big Goliath was. I don't know if I can do this. He's pretty big. He didn't come out and peek at him and look at him and go back and hide and think, oh, I can't do it. You know, and I, I, I'm sure there was a, a moment of doubt. You can't tell me he's a little guy and he's looking at, you know, but you know what? He had more faith in his God that he would overcome 
than he did in the situation. He wasn't afraid of Goliath. But you never see where he went and, and was trying to debate and talk about whether or not he could do it. What did he say? He only said, I can take him, and God is going to see me through this. It's the only thing in the scripture where you hear him talking about it. He didn't murmur and complain about how unfair it was that he was in this situation. You didn't read that anywhere. He didn't say, why would, you, why would God do this to me? You know? It didn't matter how impossible it looked. You know what? And he didn't care what others said about him. Because they talked about him, how little he was, and he wasn't, he wasn't qualified to do that. He didn't care. He didn't care what other th others thought of him. You know, I feel like if they're not talking about you, then you're probably not doing something right. Because <laughs> they're going to talk good or bad. He didn't, he didn't let all that get in here. He didn't let it get in his heart. And he certainly didn't speak it out of his mouth. You know, God always chooses who we wouldn't choose. Amen. He talked about what God had already brought him through. Sometimes, you know, you got to psych yourself up. If you're going to say something, start psyching yourself up about where God's brought you from. What has he done for you already? What does his word say that he'll do? Focus on those. Just as, as Pastor Brad was saying this morning about what praise and worship, it isn't because God needs us to worship him. It reminds you Look at the God that you serve. The creator of the heavens and the earth cares about you. And he's given you the same authority when you speak. Mountains are moved. Don't talk more about what's going on wrong and bad than what God is doing. Find something else to focus on, amen? Don't talk fear. Words carry faith to the very throne room of God. God's not listening to all your idle words and all the doubt and the unbelief, but you know what actually gets right in there to God is when you're like, Father, we're going to set our sights on this. We believe that nothing can come against us. You know, when you're, you're believing for healing, Thank you, my body's healed. It doesn't matter what it looks like. I'm not focusing on that because God said that I'm healed. Sometimes you got to talk to yourself and encourage yourself. I'm, I'm not saying you don't address or, or, or handle your problems. Because sometimes you do have to address some things. But once you address it, don't let it be what all you talk about. The problem doesn't need to be bigger than the answer. And God is your answer. Watch your venting. It's not always about your feelings. Well, I feel. And now people love to tell you how they feel. I feel this. Well, you know, it really doesn't matter what I feel. What matters is what God's Word tells me about it. Amen? It doesn't matter what I feel. And James 3.5 says, our, our tongue is a very small part of our body, but it speaks as if, as if it was very great. Isn't that crazy? Your mouth will get you into so much trouble. It can really help propel you somewhere, or it can take you all the way back. It's powerful. Your mouth can get you into so much trouble. Say, what, it, what are you saying? Say it. You need to say, what am I saying? What am I saying? It's not about what you say when you're at church. It's easy when you're here. You're like, oh, praise the Lord. God is so good. Amen. But you walk right out the door, and that's when it hits you. You know, you know why it's important to come together and be in church? Now, online church is fine. It's wonderful. Some people cannot actually get out and come to church. Something about coming together, building yourselves up together, a unity, and we're here for you. Don't you feel more, don't you feel better when you come to church? You feel like yeah, God is good, amen, praise God, God is so good. But it's about when you walk out those doors, when you go to work on Monday, when you, you have a bad day, the doctor calls you with something, your kids get involved in something, or what, you know, family does something. That's when it's on. And 
And it's about what you're saying to those closest to you. Be careful what you say. I I can't say that more than enough. Don't be double-minded. You can't speak faith and doubt. Well, this is just how the situation is. Well, I know that. We all know what the situation is, but what does God say? You cannot be double-minded. You can't one minute be saying this, the next minute be saying this. Find your balance. Man, find your balance. And then start. You know, sometimes it takes us a minute to get it together. And that's okay. And I'm not up here saying that I'm all, you know, I got it together and I don't ever say anything because now watch, I'll go home this afternoon and (laughs) say something. That's always the way it works. And my husband will be like, what did you preach? Because that's what, you know, I do to him. He has to get me back. But it's about what's in your heart and what are you saying behind closed doors? Because that is where God, God is there when you, in your private moments, what are you saying then? James 1 tells us that a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. You get to choose which voice you listen to and which voice you speak with. You choose. Look at Jesus before he was crucified. In John 14, 30, he told the disciples, I will not talk with you much more. <laughs> Why? Because I'd have been talking him out of it. I don't know about you, but I'd have been like, you don't need to go through with this. You don't need to do this. Why? Because they loved him. But it wasn't up for discussion. You know, sometimes God's got something so big for you or you you don't need, it doesn't need to be a discussion. Watch what you're saying. You know, in the midst of his battle, he kept quiet. You don't hear about him talking about his feelings like he was debating on... (laughs) Whether he's Jesus, you know, because he was a man. You can't tell me he was thinking, I can't wait to get up there on the cross. No, but he knew the calling that he had. He knew what he needed to do. But he wasn't, it's what comes out of your mouth is so powerful. Are we blowing the whole plan because we won't be quiet? Ask God for grace. It's not always easy. You know, it's not easy. Again, as I was saying, working out, it's not easy. In fact, Wednesdays are my arm days, and I feel like that is the hardest day of my life. (laughs) Starts early, then I have to go to work. I can't hardly come home and fix my hair and put my makeup on. (laughs) But it's getting easier and easier and easier. Why? Because I'm keeping at it. It's the same way with your mouth. Just keep at it. You know what? If you say something, you, you, you feel like you blow it, that's okay. You never blow it with God. Get it right. Say, yeah, I, I'm sorry, Father. Forgive me. I shouldn't have said that. This is what we want. This is what, this is what the Word says about my situation. You know, and it's easy to want to tell people so they feel sorry for you. It's just human nature. We like to be coddled. I want to be padded. But we need to quit getting the emotional thrill out of running our mouths about things. It's just true. Again, say, I love you, Mom. <laughs> quit getting the emotional thrill out of running our mouths. Sometimes we feel better when we get that emotional release, but we got to get that under control. Ask God for grace. That's what his grace and his mercy is for, is to help you. Ask God to help you speak faith. When you feel fear, ask God to help you. God, I need to get my tongue right. I need to get my confession right. I need to get what I'm thinking right. And that's where it really starts is what you're thinking and what you're focusing on. Get in the Word of God and find out how big he is. Amen how big he is. And it makes all your problems seem really small. Or, you know, I encourage you, find somebody maybe that's gone through a situation that you may be in, that they've overcome it. And look at that. Let that encourage you. God will give you the grace to conquer your mouth. Your words are full of power. 
You want to speak life into your life. You want to speak life into your kids' lives, right? I don't want to speak death and destruction in my kids' life because I can't get it together. (laughs) I want to speak life to them. Our words must reflect our faith, and our faith must be established in what God has spoken over us. We're talking about what are we saying? But why is it important? Because God has got so much for us to do. It's not just about our little small little world. Look at the world around you. They need Jesus. People are dying and going to hell, and we're focused on that we can't get something right. You know, we got we to gotta get our focus bigger than off of us. We got to get ourselves together so that we can go out and we can impact the world. Amen. Every word we speak can come true when we speak what God has spoken. It'll come true. Why? Because his words are power. You believe when God says something, it's going to happen. Remember, you have the same authority and power on the inside of you. When you speak his word, you have the same authority and power. Because when his word's spoken, it doesn't return void. When you speak God's word, it doesn't return void to you either. Amen? We got to speak what God has spoken, and our words will not return void. They're going to accomplish what we've sent them to do. Amen. Well, let's stand. Praise God. And I only went negative one minute. Amen. I'm doing better. I told him I wanted to see the negative so I could see how far I go over. I'm Sullivanized, but I'm trying not to be too Sullivanized. And I only have one closing, usually. Hallelujah, let's focus on God. I know. Amen. <laughs> Father, let's just pray together. I want you to raise, lift your hands and you talk to God. First of all, you know what? It never hurts. You can say, well, I haven't been saying anything. It never hurts when you come to God to say, Father, forgive me. Forgive me for letting idle words come out of my mouth. Forgive me for being a stumbling block, Father, to myself, to my family. Forgive me, Father God, if I have not put my faith and my trust in you, Father, that I've let situations and circumstances be bigger than who you are, God. We just ask right now, Father God, that you help us. That's what the Holy Spirit's for. He's your helper. Holy Spirit, you help us. Get our tongues under control. Get our mouths under control. We refuse to speak death into our homes, into our lives. We speak life. Life in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are our helper. That you help, you bring it to our remembrance. When we say something, you say, hey, 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 that's not right. You help us, Father. You have so much for us to do. So many lives that need to be touched, Father God. So many things that need to be accomplished. And that, Father, we we lay all, everything aside because we want to be speaking your word, Father. Your word brings health, life, strength, peace, healing. People need healing. They need you to be speaking faith, to give them hope. We thank you for, Father God, that we speak life in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. God's good. So what are you saying? Think about that. What are you saying? Well, we want to give an opportunity now for if you don't know Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, if you're online watching us and you've never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, the all-powerful King of kings and Lord of lords will live on the inside of you. Amen. Well, let's pray this. And you know what? Just pray it together. I like it because if somebody's around you and they've never prayed it before, if you're saying it, they don't mind saying it too. Say, Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins. 
I'm asking you to come into my life. Come into my heart. Wash me clean. Make me new. I want your abundant life living on the inside of me. Thank you for sending your son Jesus to die for me that I might live. I make you the Lord of my life. Amen. Well, if you prayed that for the first time, hey, you got the King of Kings. The Lord of Lords living on the inside of you. Amen. We pray you were blessed by the worship and ministry of our surge experience today. It is our desire to see people experience a surge of God's power and grace that will empower them to live life beyond their limits. Thank you for tuning in and thank you for sharing the ministry of Surge Church with your friends and family and on social media. We love you and cannot wait to see you soon.